And you think you will have enough air to do this and the back of okay. So now that discussion comes. Yeah. I saw that you had a long discussion regarding rats. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you what I think about graphs. Mm. Okay. I don't believe in graphs. Yeah, I believe in hair. Yeah. Okay. Graft is a subjective term. Mm. It's subjective. It's like breadcrumbs in a loaf of bread. Yeah. Let's say I'm selling you bread, okay, and you tell me I want a million breadcrumbs. Mm. What does it mean? Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. You need the loaf of bread. Yeah. So grafts have no meaning. Mm -hmm. They are actually misused for commercial purposes. Mm. Okay, grafts are misused as commercial. The goal of hair transplants is not to provide with grafts, it's to provide with hairs. Mm. Okay? A graft can theoretically contain no hair. A graft can contain zero hair to 10,000 hairs. I'm not correct. Mm. When we take a strip, it's a graft. It can even contain 10,000 hairs, okay? So, when you do FUT, mm. you are taking one graft with thousands of hairs. Mm. It's up to you how much you want to cut it. Mm. It will not change the amount of hairs it contains. Mm. So, graft is nonsense. So in terms of the density, how much do you think it's necessary? No, no, no. Look. We take one graft mm -hmm. with X amount of hairs. Yeah. This has nothing to do with density, coverage. Mm -hmm. we, we are not there yet. At the moment, we are taking the graft. Okay? Yeah. So we take a graft, it contains X thousand hairs. Mm -hmm. Now, it does not matter how many grafts we produce from this strip. In fact, in fact, scientific studies show that grafts, bigger grafts, we call them chubby grafts, mm. with more hairs, survive better than skinny grafts with few hairs. So, yeah. one graft with five hairs survives better than five grafts with one hair each. If you go after grafts, mm -hmm. you will get five grafts with one hair. Okay. okay? And they will probably two of them will not survive the surgery. So going for five grafts, you will end with three hairs. Yeah. But if you put one graft with five hairs, they will grow better. Yeah. So this is the second reason why I don't believe in grafts. Because more grafts worse results, not better, worse results, okay? So grafts should not be uh, a parameter in hair transplant marketing and sales. It should not be used yeah. because it's against the benefit of the patient, okay? Yes. So when I take a strip, mm. it's my subjective decision mm. on how many times I want to divide it, mm. okay? Uh, and it should be up to me how many times I want to divide it according to the best possible result. Mm. Dividing it to more, you, you're not going to have any benefits from it. There are some, now this graph is very heavily marketed in the United States, in North America. Okay? I know and some reputable clinics. Okay? They do 5,000 grafts from FUT. Mm. But when I look at the distribution, they have 1,500 single hair units. Mm. Okay? Mm. So that number, that 5,000, would be 3,000 in my hands, mm. but with the same number of hairs. Mm. So it's nothing. Uh, to make more graphs. I saw that you had a lengthy discussion regarding graph numbers, so I wanted to tell you uh, 
And, but this is the point. I'm going to ask you because I can get mm -hmm. any number of graphs from any strip. Mm -hmm. No, no. I okay. So this is the point where I'm going to ask you. Do you want a certain number of graphs or do you want me to decide on... Uh, in the end, I do have a Polish graph. Yeah, but still, so, I, I, I want... I, because I, you I, had this lengthy yeah, discussion... My point is obviously, and I know the marketing, I know yeah. it, and I know you don't get what it makes. I get that. But um, what I want, obviously, is to have this part um, densified, because right now it's a bit thinning, oh. and I want the, the back to be a cover. And I don't know what, I mean, what... Yes, yeah. of course, measure. everybody wants that. Yeah. Wanting to cover boldness has nothing to do with the discussion I'm making here, because everybody wants it. Yes. Who doesn't want the skull cover? Everybody yeah. wants it. It's a separate discussion. But it means like, what, I mean, do you yeah. think you will... The other thing, that? okay, the other thing about graft in strip surgery is mm -hmm. there is a certain amount of tissue that I can take and close comfortably yeah. in every patient it's different yeah. okay I've seen in North America where they took a strip that's thicker than an inch and they could not close the wound because they had a contract with the patient for X number of Grafts. So he paid for the number of grafts. So they kept their promise. They kept their promise. They took a strip, three fingers thick. They could not close the wound and they sent the patient home with an open skull. Contract fulfilled. Because they took this amount of grafts. Yeah. Would you like that to happen to you? So what do you think in terms of So can I know about the exact proper amount of tissue before actually examining the live patient. Can I know it with the picture sent? It's impossible. It's impossible. So, the other thing is, you know, surgery is never black and white. It's gray. Like, for instance, you can take a strip maybe like this and tightly close it. Now, it will look closed, mm. but it will torture the patient for three months. Yeah. You have discomfort for three months. Whereas, when I do my strip, mm. where I don't worry about the grafts, I measure mm. and I look at the tissue and I say, like, this amount is good for this patient and I don't care about the grafts. Yeah. I see the grafts when it's all finished. Mm -hmm. I don't know it. Yeah. I take the tissue, close it comfortably, making sure that the patient in two weeks is not feeling anything. Yeah. No tightness, nothing, no wound healing problems. Now this is the proper way to do it according to my ethics. Yeah. No, no, no. But if the agreement is on a certain amount of no problem. I can take your whole head out and send you. Actually, you would save me by using unnecessary stitches. I would take it off, open scalp, go on. 6,000, 7,000. Mm. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. But I guess there is a basic, like, uh, you assess how much graph per density or air by density. No, not density. Skin laxity. Yeah. Skin laxity and elasticity. That decides on the amount of tissue removed. Okay. The density will change the amount of hairs I get, yeah, yeah. but that's not something I can control. Yeah. Whatever the density is, it is. Yeah, but you see, we'll I am responsible, yeah. according to my philosophy, to take an amount of tissue that should be closed comfortably yeah, so the patient doesn't have donor area problems. Yeah. There is an industry that sees the donor area as the enemy. Mm. The donor area is not the enemy. It's your tissue. It's your head. But patients, clinics, companies, they evolved in the market. This is in Turkey and in the United States, in all over the world. Mm. They see the donor area as the enemy. Mm. It's not your enemy. It's your friend. Mm. 
So you should not cause severe trouble at the donor area. You will need it again. Yeah. And it's your health. You know, you, there's patients with uh, tightly closed wounds and they have severe trouble, crusting, wound opens up, infection. No, no, this never happened to me. Yeah. Because uh, I just care about the quality, not the quantity. Mm. Okay? Now, by instinct, mm. every patient would like the boldness to be restored in one visit, obviously, mm. with the least amount of money and time spent. Mm. But this is against the nature of hair restoration surgery. Mm. Because when you have advanced hair loss, okay, imagine we have a hundred thousand hairs when we are born, and if you lose all the hairs on top, it's almost half of the hair you have. So imagine losing 50,000 hairs. How can you restore this area that lost 50,000 in one city? It's against the nature of hair transplant. So although everybody wants it, I want it too if it was possible. It's against the nature. The nature of hair transplants is to do staged restoration on average three to four times on a patient with advanced hair loss. Now you may choose not to do it, but the ideal way to approach it is to do three or four surgeries, cover it, densify it, refine it, and then say like, here's, here's the result. And expecting a result with just one single very aggressive surgery does not have good consequences. Okay, so I just wanted to let you know about these things that comes from my experience. Okay, so um, yeah, so what I do is, yeah, I but think based on what you, you've seen on the back, I mean, how big do you think the strip is going to be? You, you are a good candidate for strip surgery, and I would expect your strip to give above the average amount of hairs compared to the average patient. Because you have good donor density, uh, you have a large scalp. Yeah. Of course, that works two ways. Yeah. You get more hairs, but of, of course, you need more hairs as yeah. well. So it works two ways. Yeah. It also means that if you have a larger scalp, you need a lifetime higher amount of hairs transplanted to cover because it's large. Yeah. So it works both ways. But because you have a large head, you have high donor density. Mm -hmm good caliber hair, you have good skin contrast as well, mm. not black and white, but yeah. the, the light, the, the medium color hair gives an advantage. So everything looks favorable. Okay. But as I said, I don't look at someone, you know, make mathematics mm. because my estimation becomes when I touch the scalp, yeah. when I put my gloves on and I touch the elasticity, then I know how much tissue I should remove. Mm -hmm. But do you think it's going to be like between both and ears, for example? It's going to be something like that? No, it should be a very long strip. So, so like, yeah. something like that? Because you cannot take more than a certain thickness, you can't close it. Yeah, but you can take it longer. Yeah, of so a long and thin strip is better closed than a short and thick one. So. Uh, since you thing. want a larger strip, it's best to kind of go close to the sideburns okay. to make a long okay. one, so at least right. 25, yeah. between 25 to 30 centimeters okay. of okay. strip. So you think based on, on the, what you just said on the side, you will be able to cover most? Or? Yeah, so that's another question, yeah. okay? Covering is also subjective. Because, because you could take 100 grafts, spread them all over and say, look, I covered it all. So covering is a subjective term because uh, if you don't define density, mm. then you could cover okay. uh, any okay. area you can. Yeah. Yeah. This is what, yeah, that's right. So uh, that area is huge. 
The original skull contains on average 200 uh, hairs per square centimeter, sometimes 250. A good hair transplant, if you, if you do high density, is trying to give you about 100 hairs per square centimeter. 100 hairs, okay? Now, let's measure your balding area. Again, this is very simple mathematics. From left to right, it looks 9. No, it's larger. 19. So let's say it's 20 by 10. It's approximately 20 by 10. 200 square centimeters. Multiply by 100, you need 20,000 hairs. It means three, three hair transplants. The linear, what I, what I would hazard, to be honest, is like maybe instead of going that high, it would be to go like what I, what I am. Like, it's possible, but if you go too up, high, yeah. see, I like conservative hairlines, yeah. but if you go too high yeah. and we can't see the hairline in front of you, then you don't have a frame. Uh, so to right. have a frame, the height should be mm. somewhere we can see from front of you, okay? And the measurement is approximately, you know, the golden ratio, okay. nose to chin, okay? Yeah. And from glabella to hairline should be mm. approximately equal. This is why I was measuring yeah, yeah. this. Because given okay. I always have a high, like up, very up, I don't mind to be honest to be a bit like good for right now. But uh, I think also maybe. We should go a little bit conservative about this. Did you color? see the mathematics? No. 200 square centimeters multiplied by 100, we need 20,000 hairs. And this is our average yeah. is three three to four hair transplants. Yeah. Because my point was more to say, like, if you go a bit higher, the, the air you cannot you won't put there. You won't be able True, to... it will decrease the recipient's sight. Yeah. But still, yeah. the mathematics is there. And yeah. you can make it more favorable by pulling the air line higher. Yeah. But you have to understand why air transplants need to be staged yeah, and step right. by step. And yeah. goals of, oh, doctor, I want it all covered. Yeah, yeah. we can cover it with low density. Yeah, yeah. But if you want proper density, 100 hairs, I need 20,000 hairs. Mm -hmm. And that 20,000 hairs is unachievable mm -hmm. by one hair. It, it probably needs three, at least three, mm -hmm. sometimes four hair transplants. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I understand. But do you think, based on what we just said, like the density you will be able to get in the back is going to be like. In general, know? in general, yeah. when patients have hair loss from front all the way to the back, okay, what we do is we densify frontal zone because it's priority, yeah. okay, then we either go to two thirds back and stop there, or we put density and lower grade all across. Yeah. But we end up sacrificing on crown density one way or the other. Yeah. It's impossible to go yeah. for high density from here to here in one hair transplant. And when you say low density, is it similar for the hair transplant? That's low density to you? More or less, yeah. But in the end, it's like, I'm fine, I'm going to see how other is in color, even if it's lower density, because I will do it again. Yeah. As of, as of something really like, you know, like the other thing, look, this is very long. I cannot explain everything in just half an hour, but yeah. let's say for surgeons who go for aggressive strips, mm -hmm. okay, and they manage to close it tightly, mm -hmm. you have some uh, difficult times and then it heals. Mm -hmm. You know what happens. Then the scar stretches half a centimeter. So you get a scar that is this wide. And when you want to do it again, yeah. you take the strip yeah. and half of the strip is scarred yeah. and you get no hair. Yeah. So the more you do aggressive today, is tomorrow you pay for it. Yeah. But when you do the strip my way, yeah. my scar is not thicker than yeah. a palm crease. Yeah. So when I take again the strip, again I can get a similar number of hairs. Yeah. So, as you see, 
No, There's a reason I'm for why I'm I... Realistic. I'm not, so I can explain to Michael. But that's why, as I said, I'm, I'm totally fine to go a bit higher so to be able to not suffer a bit. Because at the end of the day, I mean, I'm still okay. It's not like... So as long as I'm able to get something a bit like deeper... Shall I propose a slightly higher airline than this one? Yeah. Okay. So, how did we decide about shaving? Yeah, we can shave. We can shave? Yeah. I mean, it's easier for you to shave. It's easier, and I, I'm able to a little bit get. I mean, a lot of people will object, but when I have this clean scalp, yeah, right. uh, it's easier for me to both get the optimal strip. Also, easier when I'm closing the wound, like I can see everything. I mean, it will give you a camouflage problem for some time, but... Not working like that, but we have to get some paternity, so... It's okay to shave? Yeah. Okay, so we will shave. Like, conventionally they say, okay, we don't need to shave when we do it. Right, so but look, there's small things, small. Oh, yeah. Like when I shave, I see the thinning in the neck, I see the thinning in the top, no, I so see. I see my donor zone better, so I can place it better. Right. So I finally <laughs> made it very conservatively, yeah. like this, yeah. so I can but I go all the way. Yeah. Okay? Good? Okay, that's good. <laughs> good.